So, um, for the developing world, for poor countries that maybe don't have so much electricity, uh, what do you do? Well, the first thing is to recognize that it's a great tragedy that the poorest people are paying the most for electricity because they're wasting it, or for electricity services because they're wasting it. And so, while one may at first blush think, well, why worry about those countries? That's where you worry. Uh, it's just terrible. Uh, in the north of China, for example, that's not a small country, but uh, uh, the lower quintile in income pays 40% of their income for energy. Okay? Now, they're wasting half of it. So if you cut that waste out, they would pay 20% of their income for energy. So it's a very important thing. There's another factor in developing countries. They may not be using much energy today, and as I said, pro probably wasting most of it. Uh, but as they progress, they're going to use more and more. One would hope they'll progress. And again, you want them to have access to that electricity or energy, but you want them to use it efficiently and you need to invest today uh, for future use if you can afford to. One of the benefits of energy efficiency is that it enables much more distributed energy. And one of the good things about distributed energy is that it will typically tap into local resources, whether it is a typically renewable resources. So you're tapping into a flow of energy rather than a stock that has been accumulated over time. And energy efficiency allows you to better deal with the uh, variability of that resource maybe, or simply the size of that resource. So if it's a run of, of uh, river hydro, mini hydro project, if you're very careful with energy efficiency, you can make that energy serve all the local needs um, and provide all the services and products rather than having to supplement that run of river uh, energy with something else. Um, you can also integrate several types of renewable, local renewable resources uh, and include energy efficiency into the mix because again they're typically more expensive uh, by being smaller they have more fixed costs that you have to amortize over a smaller energy use but with energy efficiency you can minimize the size of those investments or simply make whatever resource you have in handy uh, serve more people's needs. Um, and so that's why I've always said they go in tandem. Uh, if you're going to invest in solar photovoltaics, for example, you would be very remiss not to do energy efficiency first. Uh, it's absurd to put in a 2 kilowatt system when maybe you can do with a 200 watt system. Now, China's an interesting story because in 1980, the Chinese government figured out that if they didn't do energy efficiency, they weren't going to be able to grow their economy the way they wanted to. Deng Xiaoping announced in 1980 that energy would grow half as fast as GDP. Now, nobody outside of China knew that, uh, but uh, everybody inside of China, well, not everybody, but people inside of China knew it. And so China was uh, the sort of poster boy of a developing country that could cut the, the link between energy growth and GDP growth. Uh, it was the generally accepted wisdom that a developing country needed energy for economic growth and that energy demand would grow faster than GDP. In fact, in China between 1980 and 2002, energy grew 40 percent as fast as the economy. Energy efficiency has been a, one of the most important drivers of economic growth in China. And, and let me say one other thing about that. Um, one of the reasons that energy efficiency has such a potent economic impact that I think people don't realize is that the capital that is saved by investing in energy efficiency instead of investing in in energy supply, which is extremely capital intensive, that capital can go to hospitals and roads and uh, other things like that, schools, and it's a huge amount of capital saved. 
so that on a macroeconomic level, energy efficiency made a whopping difference to China and its economic success over all those years. Could China, in fact, do more with energy efficiency? Uh, the answer, surprisingly, is that China is doing as much as it possibly can right now in energy efficiency. Uh, for a time, energy growth was out of control. In fact, for three years, between 2002 and 2005, uh, energy grew at the fastest rate the world has ever known, with the largest quantity of increase the world has ever known. But starting in 2005, the Chinese government decided that they had to do something about it and do something serious about it. They committed to reducing energy intensity, that is energy per unit gross domestic product, by 20% in five years. Now that is a staggering commitment. They are likely to either make that goal or come very close to it. Uh, so for the last five years, they've done virtually everything imaginable. They've uh, initiated policies that effectively uh, require the top thousand energy using enterprises in the country to reduce their energy use. They've, they're now enforcing building energy standards uh, throughout the, the urban areas of the country. They're, they're providing financial incentives. In fact, they, they, they scaled up the incentives from less than a billion dollars to more than seven billion dollars in four years. So it's pretty hard to imagine. And, and now they're starting to uh, create uh, very strong private sector entities, ESCOs, energy service companies. Uh, the government is supporting their growth and development. Uh, and they will become potent forces to continually improve the capability to implement energy efficiency.